Welcome back to Vampire. We are still in the process of heading to Whitechapel. I guess technically we're inside of Whitechapel, but specifically we're heading to the dispensary to find Darius Petrescu and the nurse, whose name I forgot. Try to find out what's going on with this blackmail plot against Lady Ashbury. So let's keep heading there. We're fairly close. I think I want to head to the hideout before I go to the dis dispensary since it's very close. Forwards and to the right. Okay. Ooh, district status serious. Well, that would explain why there's so many enemies around here. Red, I've got the dual-handed scythe or a shotgun with uh, one cartridge. Ooh, secrets. Lakeland. Large box of pills and six shotgun shells. That is really good. Yeah, I gotta remember, I can... <laughs> there we go, another one. I can look up and teleport. Guess there isn't always treasure. Oh, I already walked here a little bit, didn't I? I think we saw somebody, like, shoot a gun up there. I guess the save point was a little bit back. It's been probably like four days or so since I've played, so I'm a little bit out of the loop. This stinking alley reeking worse than a week old lavy. Sunday. Are you all right? The bastard hit the wall next to me. I don't even know if he meant to miss. If you've been hurt, I can help you. I'm a doctor. Name's Albert. Remember it. Now bugger off. Okay. <laughs> Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? If you know anything about her, I'd appreciate it. Never heard of her. She's pretty, I'll keep an eye out. Wow, you're a real prick. Ooh, can I eat you? I guess I can. Uh, let's talk to him first, though. Three hints that I don't have. What happened? Did you really steal that man's medication? Hey, I didn't do anything. It ain't me. Oh. Uh. I didn't mean to do that. I saw the mesmerize button. I meant to like do the examine mesmerize to see if I even could. I guess I can since it worked. Whoops. Um, can I release them and still talk with them? Or are they kind of out of commission for the day? Probably out of commission. Uh, oh, maybe not. I won't end up. How are you? I'm not your boy, all right? Now piss off. Okay, good, we can still talk. Yeah, I meant to do this. Yeah, they're level one. Medical checkup, 525 XP. Oh, they have fatigue. And I have a treatment for fatigue. Do you need assistance? Please. Feeling tired these days. There you go. Let's hope nobody steals it from you. Very funny. Now they're worth a little bit more, and recovering. What happened? Hey! I didn't- Okay, back to this. All right. Perhaps the poor drunk just confused you with someone else. Sod off, mister. You ain't got no clue what's going on here. Bastard was a soldier in the war, so now he's got the right to shoot me. It's true. I'm not familiar with this part of town. Perhaps you could help me. I said sod off. Go find yourself another guide. So, person with a gun was... in the war. That's my hint. Goodbye, young man. Me? I'll not die in some piss-stinking alley reeking worse than a weak old lavy. Is this the way to the hideout? Yeah, it is, actually. 
Oh, a train! I just saw an actual train go by. That's weirdly exciting. I wonder how often it goes. Was it you? What? Shooting a boy in the middle of the street. Not the best thing to do, wouldn't you say? What? You saw what happened? Who are you? I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you promise me to set your gun aside. No. Look, I I'm not a violent man. I'm Benjamin Palmer, Doctor. And no one can help me. Not even you. You sure? If you have a headache, I can cure that. Oh, they have a migraine, which is distinct from a headache. Damn. Perhaps you could focus for a moment and tell me your troubles. I'm sick, broke, and my son just stole my pills. Everything's coming up roses. Oh, that's your son. What can you tell me about this place? Nothing to say, really. This is where I used to live, and this is where I live now. You mean you used to have a better life? Yeah, I had a wife, a home, and a job. I even used to have a name. And now I'm just Ben. Ben the Trap. You don't have anywhere to go. No family that would welcome you. Not since the death of my wife, Albert Smaller. She was sick, you see. Long before the flu and all this shit. What is it, Benjamin? It was the war, wasn't it? Your nerves are shot, aren't they? I need some answers, Private. From one soldier to another. The doctors called me a liar. Coward. Put me in a straight jacket, lock me up. Finally, they sent me back to the front lines with a handful of tablets. It's a pity that doctors still practice such barbaric methods. It's a dishonor to our profession. Now only the pills stop me thinking about this shit. To not hear the explosions. I'm even scared of the dark these days. So if nothing else, they definitely have PTSD. Whatever the boy did, I'm sure he didn't deserve a public execution. I swear I didn't want to hit him. It's just that I'm sick in the end, you see, and the boy just, just faked me last nerve. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Have you heard anything? It's funny, I've been searching for it too. I need some pills. The woman is a phantom, if you ask me. Really? And why is that? Word is she ain't real. She's a cover for some doctor who runs an illegal dispensary for migrants. Darius Petrescu, or whatever the name was? A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. Definitely need to come back when I have some migraine medication. What is no this? For the Swanborough cordial. Oh. Uh, what's the name of these sorts of people? When science fails you, this elixir will give you faith the again. Yeah, they're definitely- Snake Oil! That's the name of it. Snake Oil salesperson, I guess. Selling bullshit cures. Good evening, miss. Good evening, sir. Are you interested in a miraculous cure for this unknown and deadly epidemic? Actually, I am. Then you have come to the right place. The famous Swanborough Cordial is all you need to help keep you in perfect health. Oh, really? Why didn't I hear about it during my studies? I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Ah, my brother has spoken of your research, sir. I'm Loretta Swanborough, and it's always a pleasure to meet a fellow healer. <laughs> fellow healer. I'm trying to imagine the sort of person or, or people that would actually do this and sell bullshit medicine to people that need actual real help or they'll die. 
I don't know how big of a problem snake oil sales people were or are still. Um, I imagine they were probably pretty big during times of of widespread sickness, like, you know, Black Plague and, and whatnot, and Spanish Flu. Because those would be the peak times when you could sell people anything, pretty much, because they're so fucking desperate. I'm just imagining the sort of person that would actually do that. I can imagine two kinds of people. One, which might be what this person is, where they actually believe the medicine helps people. If they actually believe it, then I, I could totally understand why they would do it, because they honestly believe they're actually helping people. But if they know it's bullshit, which I'm sure a lot of snake oil salespeople do... How... That is so... Disgustingly immoral. How could you possibly live with yourself? Selling complete crap to extremely desperate people that will very likely die if they don't get real help. Who probably barely have any money at all. I just, I, it's unconscionable. Tell me, who intrigues you most in Whitechapel? The region itself is something to see, but I would say Camellia the mute florist who gives away her flowers. What do you think of the locals? Most of them are afraid or desperate. They all come to me eventually for my remedy. Is there anyone I should avoid? Cadogan Bates, without a doubt. The bloody bastard remorselessly exploits poor migrants as soon as they get here. You don't say. A lot of hints required. Oh, I can actually trade with him. I didn't really look at that until now. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling. What do you actually have? Okay, this is weird. This is... <laughs> this is really weird. So, the text and, you know, the things that, that they speak about, Loretta speaks about, is When science fails you, try my remedies. But then the stuff they actually sell... Um, brand new drug. So they sell two drugs? Or is this it? The list of ingredients printed in Latin. Sign can be recycled into components. Cordial. I think this... I'm not sure if a cordial is medicine. These two are definitely medicines. This one might be. Um, but they say when science fails you, and then they sell ingredients that are, I mean... Codeine? Sodium hypochlorite solution? Ferrous tartrate? I don't know if this is science failing anybody. Why would you sell this sort of stuff? This is just like... raw chemical ingredients for... Mixing actual scientifically based medicine. It's just, it's, it's weird. It's like what they wrote is that they're a snake oil salesperson, and they kind of are, I guess, maybe with a cordial, but then they're, they're also just a generic uh, medicine salesperson. Very odd. Opium. With the rise of the epidemic and the rampant shortage of legal medications, London citizens. Oh, what? And, wait, what? That is not a correctly written sentence. Rampant shortage of legal medicines. London citizens, for its sedative and anesthetic properties, have recently used opium again. Oh, maybe that's grammatically correct, but it's really weird. But yeah, it makes sense. I mean, opium's not going to cure anything, but it'll just generally make you feel better. Of course. Ergo... Ergotamine. It's a brand new drug that has a strong... Vasco, uh, vasoconstriction properties that is often prescribed to treat painful migraine attacks. Oh! Okay, so this is probably the key ingredient that I was missing to make the medication that I need to treat the, uh, soldier person. Let's, uh, buy a couple of these. I'm not sure how many I need. Don't think I want any opium. And we are not quite Goody. done yet. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like to talk about competition. Competition, you say? Never met her, but it seems she provides some sort of medical care to the poor. The whole thing has to be some sort of scam, if you ask me. <laughs> They're really making this very on the nose. This person who's just selling scams, complaining about people taking advantage of the migrants who come in, and other people. Doing scams. Goodbye, Miss Swanborough. It's a 
effectiveness has been proven by many. Even the flu is... Okay, we are very close to the hideout. Let's go there and make some migraine medication. When science fails you... Is it here? Oh, that is it. I'm so used to them being up somewhere we have to teleport. Feels weird that it's on ground level. Feels unsafe. Oh no, it's a loading screen. I'll see you in like, two minutes. Oh god, there's a body in this safe house. How safe is this safe house? A ring, and it was purple. Probably worth a bit of money. Another one. Wait a second. That's the same photo that was at... You know, pretty much the beginning of the game, um, that room that we went into where Jonathan tried to go to sleep and, like, shot themselves to wake up from the dream? This exact photo was there, too. This was a family's house, wasn't it? Oh, is there a birdie in the cage? Let's go see. Maybe the Ansel to the rescue. It is awfully dark, but I don't think so. Good. I'd like to think it made it out. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, a safe. I just knew the combination? Or something? I don't know, but I'll take it. Oh, so there's another exit. Oh, even another one. Alright, migraine and medication. Ooh, wait, where is it? Sepsis, anemia, fatigue, cold, bronchitis, num Oh, I can't- I actually just can't make it yet. I need something to analyze, don't I? Damn. Okay, well, let's make- let's make it so we have one of everything if we can. Can't make those. Oh, what am I missing from this? Sodium hypochlorite solution. Dang. Oh, it- this takes opium to make these blood serums. Damn. We barely have any XP, so there's no real reason to rest. Let's see where one of these doors leads. Where are we? Oh, we're super close. Oh yeah, that's the door we entered down there. I like what they've done. They've done some clever tricks to make it look like some of these windows that has that have lights in them. Uh, they look 3D. Like they, it looks like there's actually stuff inside, but there really isn't. I think it's mostly a 2D image that's just um, kind of like offset from the window, so that it has some depth to it. Something like that. It looks really cool though. Very convincing. the dispensary. Um, yeah, let's go in there right now. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now, goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. 
Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Investigate their actions. Oh, they have bronchitis. Going to a shed out back? No, that's not a shed, that's just a a building out back. Knocking on the door. Oh, I'm gonna listen in on a conversation, aren't I? Okay, I've seen this thing before. I don't I still don't know entirely what I'm supposed to do. Oh. Press F on the person. A strange man was at the door with a pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Perhaps just the friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. So someone else is on to what they're, they've got going on here. Also, why does Dorothy have a perpetual scowl? to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Nearby the church they just mentioned. <laughs> Pretty sure they looked right at me. Right, Nethercott and Clayton Darby. But first, I need to root around in the trash. How close are these places? Ah, oh, pretty close. Alright, now I think it's a good time to start speaking with people. I think there's somebody I ran past. I don't remember where, though. This goes down to the docks. No, yes. No. Anyway, let's go this way. Towards our goals. I'm expecting an ambush or something at some point. Welcome, sir. Please take a browse of my wares. Whoa, what I the am heck? Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. I never try to press the movement keys during a conversation, but apparently you can just move the camera. That's weird. I kind of wish I couldn't, actually. Do you need help, sir? I only need you to purchase something from my shop, sir. What do you have? Right, then. Show me what... Oh, a whole bunch of stuff. Basically everything that that uh, steak oil person had, plus more. Yeah, these handle parts and trigger parts are good for upgrading melee weapons and guns. And I seem to have not very many of them, so I think I might want to buy some. But let's also buy some ingredients, too. Actually, no, let's buy some handle parts. Yeah, there goes most of my money. You never also, right then. I should probably sell those rings. Each one sells for 16. Hmm. Pills can be recycled into components. I wonder what kind of components. Those might be worth keeping. I don't know about the rusty ones. That can go. Junk. Components. Cigarette case. Components. Hmm. Maybe I'll recycle these. What 
do they turn into? Oh, I have to recycle at a workbench, don't I? Yeah. Thanks. You. How is business around here? Business? I had no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. <laughs> look at that image for Joe Peterson. They look like a stereotypical thug. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me, came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness. Something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse, then? Always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. Can I suck on you? Not sexually, I mean kill you. You've gone way down in my likability book. Ooh, they're worth a lot of XP, probably because they're a merchant. And they're healthy. Yes. Those bloody immigrants should know their place, eh? How dare they do a better job than the lazy natives of this land? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu. Something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse Crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. Wow, this person really is a piece of shit. I would not mind eating them at all. Do I do just do it now? Would that plunge this place into more chaos, though? Uh, I'm gonna put them on the list of to eat later. Goodbye for now. I know it's hard to believe, but this district has always been wretched. I'll let you go. Oh, is that the thug? That is the thug that's been bothering them over there. Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off! I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. It's not really much of a reason to ask for Dorothy Crane, right? May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. Potential to eat, number two. Also worth a pretty good amount of XP, and they're not even a merchant. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. Oh, I didn't even stop to think of whether I have the level to mesmerize them. I don't. They're level three. I forgot to check the merchant. How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? 
So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. I've heard that name before, the Wet Boot Boys. Most people don't become thugs when unemployed. This is a choice you made. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Ah, oh, ex-besties. Goodbye. Let's go back and ask him about that. Fancy you never... Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I'd known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. Taking out your anger on others is nothing but cowardice. And Colossi are quite famous for tumbling down. We've all had some rough times, haven't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody will be fool enough to stand against the wet boot, boy. Goodbye for... That didn't open up any new hints, did it? Where'd they go? Where did they go? Also, what's in here? Hello, young man. I'm Dr. Reed. And I would like to ask you a few questions. May I enter, please? Sorry, no, sir. My father does not like people entering our house, you see. Is this part of a quest? I don't actually know what this building is. Your father is worried about you, boy. He asked me to look for you. He did? So my father actually worries about me, then. Okay, then. Come on in. I'm a Harry, by the way. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? Peterson's house. Hold on, what quest is this a part of? Oh, they're Joe Peterson's son, the thug. The father's a thug, that is. Don't know about the kid. And they have fatigue. I can probably help him with that. So, I'm not bothered. What could be worse? They are very depressed. Yeah, I've got one treatment. Let's help him. Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. You'll feel better with this. But you need to get a grip, young man. Medication alone won't cure melancholia. I'm not sure I'm happy with the idea of living long in a world like this. But I thank you for your concern, sir. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jonathan Reed is a shitty doctor, and kind of a shitty person too. I mean, they do a lot of good things, but Jesus Christ, their bedside manner is just garbage, and they say so much just trash. Here, I'll help you with your fatigue, but as far as you being almost suicidally depressed, get a grip. Yeah, good job, Jonathan. That'll help. Your father and Mr. Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, P 
people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. We need to do something about him. How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. Strange. They seem to recognize that their father is a piece of shit. Scared of them and calls them an idiot, but at the same time, they want to be strong like them. So sort of... They hate them, but also they're sort of their role model, in a way. Forgive my bluntness, young man, but you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? This place is awful, I agree. But does that not mean your situation can only improve? That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I... I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. Understandable. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? <laughs> That's such an overly dramatic thing to just say to the room, to nobody in particular. Let's see what I can see what I can steal from you. Please, I hope you don't mind. I guess I just know all the combinations. Maybe my vampire senses allow me to get in them. I wonder if I could find some dirt on the father, maybe, because their father sleeps here. It's locked, all right. Professional vampire hunters. Didn't I already read this? I think I read a pamphlet from like the same group, but this is a different one. If you ever suspect someone to be a vampire, don't try to kill it yourself. You have no chance. Instead, contact me or try to inform a professional vampire killer. These men and women are rare, but they know what to do against these evil creatures. It even seems that some of them are working together under the name of the Guard of Prewin, a paramilitary organization dedicated to the eradication of the vampires in London. They are your friends. You are not alone. Solutions exist. Be smart. Spread the word. Aha, job refusal letter. Wait, job refusal? So this isn't your last hope to make a living then, is it? Dear Mr. Peterson, it's my duty to inform you of our refusal to accept your application for a job at the dockyard. Must thank you for the time spent at our office, explaining the dif uh, difficulty of your situation with your ill boy and the loss of your beloved wife, but it's also my duty to point out the policy of our company, which expressly re reproves the employment of former criminals or convicts. Uh, your unfortunate connection with the wet boot boys, etc., etc. Hard times, but da, 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 deepest sympathies. God be with you and your family. Oh, okay. That never mind. That fits with their story. Another hint. Please, Joe. How long have we known each other? We even used to be neighbours, for Christ's sake. I'd prefer not to give you another beating, Barrett. 
Well, I guess I'm gonna have to break this up. Or... Or not. Cheap price, good quality. Come on, take a look, don't be afraid. Back to their appointed positions. <laughs> All right, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I am going to speak to these people some more and see if I can utilize the hints that I just got.